So, I gotta tell you, I'm pretty excited. I think it's probably about time that we hit the road for some photography. But before I do, I'll show you what's in this year's gear bag. Where did these videos come from? You know, it kind of takes me back to school when we're looking in the sack lunches of our friends to see what, <laughs> what they got. What's in there? Yes, where's your lunch? Make some trades maybe? No, I'm not trading my gear. I don't know about you. I like what I got, so let's cut to it. Now before we jump in, everything is on the list below, so if you want to review the gear or you have questions, make sure you put them below. Also are links to all the gear that I'm showing you here today, including the bag, the camera gear, and some of the things in between. Affiliate links, they don't cost you anything, but it does definitely help me and support this channel. So if you like anything, grab it and it supports me and I appreciate that. So, starting with the bag, this is made by Tamrac. It's the Anvil Series 27. If you look on their website, it says carry everything anywhere. And that's pretty much true. This thing fits so much gear and that's one of my favorite things about it. Another thing that I love about it is the zippers. I know it sounds funny, but I've had so many bags have terrible zippers and get caught and I can't, probably operator error, but anyway, I've never had issues with this bag and the zippers. They have these nice big loops that you know, help put a lot of pressure. And it's probably because I overstuffed my bag and you know, it's really tough to zip those zippers up and that's probably my fault because I want to take everything everywhere. Kind of like what it says on the website. Got great pockets on the outside for quick access for things like my headlamp. This headlamp is the best headlamp and most reliable headlamp I've ever purchased and it's the Black Diamond Series. I think I got it at our REI. What I love about the headlamp most is it's dimmable. So instead of settings one, two, three, you just hold it down and it gets brighter and dimmer. So also have a second backup or with somebody else that needs a headlamp, it's always good to carry two. And in this pouch, I've got extra batteries, extra SD card, a lens cloth, and allergy medication. The worst thing I always get in the spring are allergies. It's miserable. So if you're out there, make sure you pack your medication, whatever it is that you need. Now on this side, it's the same size pouch. Now I've got an Arca Swiss plate, Allen wrench for tripod or camera, got power cables, and this guy, this guy is really awesome. It's called the Tile. It's a GPS locator, so in the event that I walk away from my bag or my bag walks away from me, it'll alert me within a certain distance and ping my cell phone. Also, if I forget or leave my cell phone somewhere, two taps, where's my cell phone? Oh, there it is. And the opposite is true as well. If I can't find my camera bag, I got it right here. Simply go to the app. There it is. So, very useful, fun little toy. It's always important if you go through camera batteries to carry a battery charger, but I usually leave this in the vehicle. So I'm gonna zip this back up, put it back in. And two more external pouches, one right here for additional things like a flashlight. Now this little tool is pretty useful. One side goes on your tripod, the other attaches to an umbrella. So in inclement weather, you can be hands-free, have an umbrella above your camera to protect your gear, or to prevent water from hitting your lens. So I always have that in there. And because I hate cold hands, these are electric rechargeable hand warmers. Now, I wanna kinda of put the test to see what's better between the you know disposable ones and these, but these have done actually really well, and they also work as a backup battery charger. So if you do end up with a dead cell phone battery and you've got your cables, these little guys could charge your cell phone. On the outside of the bag, this is where I put either my canteen or water bottle. Also, I always carry in certain areas bear spray. You definitely don't wanna run into a grizzly without this guy. <laughs> There's actually two places to place your tripod. Use these straps on the back, as well as this up here to hold in place, or I actually prefer mine on the side. That way I can open up my bag and have everything accessible with my tripod on the side. Now one compartment remaining on the outside to show. I like to take a lot of gear with me, and that includes hats, gloves, ear mittens, Camera strap, black rapid shoulder strap. The reason I like it is it's got a nice little clip 
which attaches it and doesn't slide around too much on my shoulder. When you have your camera here, there's a couple of stoppers that allow it to stop motion beyond that and you're not dedicated to a certain area. And this ties into the L brackets or into the foot that I'll show you later on one of my lenses. And I'm telling you, this pouch fits a lot. I typically carry an umbrella, power cord, poncho that is actually fit to this bag so you don't have to worry about aftermarket ponchos not fitting, backup battery for devices in the case that anything runs out of power, shower cap. Now this isn't for me but this is for my camera. I typically protect my camera in rainstorms and a towel. I also think that it's great that it's got storage for my MacBook Pro along with any permits or paperwork for my tours. Can you believe all that fits in there? So just to show you what's inside this bag, lots of room, compartments here for batteries. You can never have enough batteries, business cards, lens cloths. What else do I have in here? And I also am taking this. This is brand new to my bag this year. This is the Breakthrough Filter Kit. It's a kit containing circular polarizers, step-up rings. Breakthrough also has a night sky filter, which is incredible for Milky Way and astrophotography. Take a look, links are below. Comes in a very nice pouch. I don't often use graduated neutral density filters, but Breakthrough's got a great quality product for when you want one as well. Now, just a couple of other things that are in my camera bag that I think are important. For some reason, I always forget to take things and I'm starving. It's never fun to take photos when you're starving and so, I always take some snacks. Like it says on the website, carry everything anywhere. Let's see, what else do I have? How did this get in there? How'd you get in there? My goodness. Take everything. Take some photos? Yeah? All right, let's go. Put you back in there. Ugh. So this is really right stuff. So this is the Versa Tripod Series 4. It's got four sections. Super easy for extending. And I love the twist locks. Sometimes I've had the latch locks uh, and have had issues with them, staying put. But this, you know, I can work this tripod with my gloves on, no issues. A lot of the times it's cold weather, so I have my gloves. This thing has been through it all. It's probably the tripod that I've owned the longest. I think I've had this for probably two years and it's still perfect, in great shape. And another feature of this tripod that I really like is no center column. That way I can get extremely close to the ground. I talk a lot about getting close to the ground to make strong foregrounds and, you know, pictures to be able to walk into. This tripod does its magic and allows me to do so. And now that it's down here, we could talk about the ball head. This is also made by Really Right Stuff. It's the BH55. And the reason I chose this ball head is because there's two pivot points. One here, right where the ball head attaches, and one right here, up top. Now every scenario is different, but I find myself using both pivot points often. And the reason I love this the most is I do a lot of panorama shooting where I've got my camera placed vertically and I'm able to get independent motion and have this angled down at the same time. So, love this ball head. It's a little pricey, but you get what you pay for. I've had zero issues. The second thing that I just love about this ball head is the latch. I can't tell you how many times I've dropped cameras thinking that they're secure on the ball head, and they're not. But there is no guessing whether the latch is closed or whether the latch is open. It's got a level here and a level here so that you know if your camera's level, if the tripod's level, it does a great job. Now the second tripod I carry is also a carbon fiber made by Benro. It's the Mach 3 tripod and similar to the really right stuff, it's got carbon fiber and twist locks. Great secure feet. It also, no center column, it actually came with a center column, but I removed the center column. So it too can go flat. And you know, on this, I actually went with Colorado Tripod Company with the medium-sized Highline ball head. 
So the plate can actually be swapped out for a twist lock or I prefer the lever lock. I'll show you one more. Now this one fits inside my camera bag. This guy fits extremely low to the ground, also made by Really Right Stuff. Now this has a Joby ball head. I actually looked for the smallest ball head that I could find, which actually supports a lot of weight. This guy does magic. You wanna see just how strong this is? There you go. Supports a lot of weight, even your telephoto lenses. So before we get into camera gear, my advice is always the best camera gear is the gear that you have. Get out and use it, get comfortable with it. So my main camera is the Canon T2i. Now what I love about the, I'm kidding. Now this is the first camera that I actually learned on. You know, it's amazing the technology advances since this came out, but I'll tell you what, this shot amazing images and it made me become passionate about photography. So, you know, for those who are still shooting with a T2i, I think it's a great choice. So my main camera body is actually one of two camera bodies that I use equivalently. So this is the Canon 5DSR. Some places I see that it's 50.6 megapixels. Some places I see 50.3 megapixels. Any way you spin it, it's about 50 megapixels. So it's got a much higher resolution than other full frame cameras in Canon's line. So the reason I love it is I love to blow up prints huge. Fill walls, 12, 14 foot pieces, no problem with the 5DSR. So the drawback to the 5DSR is it's not very good with low light sensitivity. Also, it struggles with video, and it doesn't do well at night for astrophotography. That's why what I have and what I'm filming on this video is the 5D Mark IV. Now the 5D Mark IV is a 30.1 megapixel, full frame, incredible video, color is great. So it's got better image quality overall, more dynamic range, and low light sensitivity is much better with the 5D Mark IV. So anytime I'm shooting astrophotography, early sunrise, blue hour, sunset, it's typically with the 5D Mark IV. Anything in good lighting, I'll reach for the 5DSR or if I'm gonna print something massive. Now, Canon's been asking me, Ryan, why aren't you jumping to mirrorless? And for me, I like what I'm getting with the 5DSR and the 5D Mark IV, but they decided to send me something anyway to test out. That's when they sent me something new for my camera bag in 2020 is the EOS RA. Did you know that there was an EOS RA? A for Astro. This is the industry's first full frame mirrorless camera dedicated to astrophotography. So it's got an infrared cutting filter positioned right in front of the CMOS sensor. So it's modified to permit approximately four times as much transmission of the hydrogen alpha rays as versus the standard EOS R cameras. And this modification allows for much higher transmission of deep red infrarays emitted by nebula without requiring any other special modifications. So this is kind of a game changer for those who shoot deep space astrophotography. But I took it on a recent journey for standard astrophotography and I was pretty impressed. So when I go out and shoot astrophotography, I'll probably leave the 5DSR at home, take this along with my 5D Mark IV and see which I like better. So now let's jump into lenses. So every landscape photographer needs a wide angle. I've got two wide angles. So you're viewing this video on the Canon's 11 to 24 super wide angle. Now 11 to 24, unbelievable lens. This lens I use when I'm really needing a wide angle, getting close to the ground, and sometimes you just have to make space. It's an F4 lens. I use it even for astrophotography. One of the things that I'm impressed most about the 11 to 24 is the fact that it doesn't give a lot of distortion like most fisheye lenses. I anticipated kind of having a fisheye view, but this wide angle is a game changer. So for those extra wide angles or getting close to the ground where you need a little bit more, the 11 to 24 is a perfect solution. Now jumping up, every landscape photographer needs a standard wide angle lens. This is the 16 to 35 2.8 Mark III. Now this lens is a workhorse. Most of my wide angle landscapes have been shot with this. I think I've had this lens for a couple of years, zero issues, crystal clear, tack sharp, 
16 to 35, it's kind of your standard landscape photo lens. Now up from the 16 to 35 is Canon's 24 to 70. You know, when I first started photography, a lot of my landscapes were really super wide angle, the grand vistas. As I've progressed in landscape photography, I have to say that I use this more often. Zooming in and compressing the photographs brings a beauty to photography like I hadn't experienced before with the grand scene. So you'll see me using this more often now than I had previously before. I would say I use this probably 40% of the time in my shooting. Now for the times that 70 millimeters isn't enough, this is where I've upgraded recently. Canon's 100 to 400 L series lens. Now you'll see an extender on it, which is a 1.4. That makes this lens reach out to 600 millimeters. You know, it's funny, recently I was in the Slaw Canyons with a workshop last year. People were wondering why I was walking into the Slaw Canyon with a telephoto. And I'll show you, this is the picture that I caught. Telephoto landscape photography is absolutely stunning. So I always recommend taking a telephoto wherever you go. This is definitely my new favorite. One of the things that I didn't like about this lens is the foot that it came with required you to put a plate on the foot. Now, I didn't know about this until a friend told me about them, but you can actually purchase a replacement foot that by itself has Arca Swiss grooves in it. Another thing about the replacement foot is it's got areas where you can attach a black rapid strap and have it around your neck instead of having the black rapid strap connected to your camera. So with Canon mirrorless, it's the RF series lenses. So Canon was kind enough to send along an RF lens for me to try out. This is the RF 15 to 35 L series. Now, one thing that I notice also is it's got image stabilization on the lens. So I'm excited to test this out in the field and see what I think. So stay tuned. So that is what's in my camera bag. Are you glad you tuned in? Did you see something that you liked? Again, put the comments down below. I'll do my best to get back to you and respond to anything that you've seen or have questions on. Yeah, let's go take some photos. We'll see you next time. Let's go take some photos. It's the money.